This is me and I'm an artist. This is a portrait of my son. And this is me burning it in my backyard. How did I get here? Let's go back to the beginning. I began the drawing in my normal way, locating the thirds of his head, making sure that the hairline, brow bone, bottom of his nose and chin were all in the right place. Once I have those in place, then it's really easy to hang kind of the features around the rest of those lines, finding the orbital bone to locate the eyes and so on. Since he's home for the quarantine, it's easy to get him to pose for me, at least for a little bit right now. I work in pastel, so right now I'm working in pastel pencils, just correcting and recorrecting as I go. Eventually I'll keep grabbing darker and darker drawing sticks so I can just keep resetting the drawing. I keep asking myself if things are in the right place and eventually I grab a black pastel pencil stick and keep looking at things, readjusting and making sure everything is pretty much looking good and where I want it to be. This leads me into the second stage of the painting where it gets me grabbing what I call a fistful of yellow pencils in bright acidic yellow. I do this so I can find the light across his face. I literally am looking at across everything on his face and finding out how much light is catching the planes and how things turn and recede, how the edges disappear into the void or the shadowed area. This stage is all about relativity, literally how the planes of the face are lit and how they are relative to each other. Only once I have this blueprint can I really understand color and how it's going to sit over top of all of this information. If I understand the light, truly understand it, then everything else will fall into place. Because now I'm not just painting things like the eyes or the nose or anything else like that. I'm painting the topography between and around those things. And that knocks my drawing into shape. Because now I can easily find errors and correct them. And again, it's all about relativity. After that, I start finding a little bit more of the core shadows. And again, always refining the drawing as I go. Here I blur things out just a little bit with my fingers, come back in with that black pastel pencil again to really set the edges of things so I really know where things begin and end. Then comes the third stage where I'm starting to pop in little bits of color right on the turn, right where the light meets into the dark parts. A little bit of red, a little bit of orange. I'm really free to be intuitive here and just kind of feel my way around. Like how would those colors be if I really pushed them or exaggerated them? And, uh, you know, everything is on the table at this point. Some yellows, oranges, reds, purples. It's fun to play. Which brings me to the entire point of this video. I had a professor in college that stressed to us students to paint fearlessly. As though there were no end product, as if we had to destroy the work at the end. We giggled at that thought and stressed out over every color and every mark that we made on our paintings anyway. But then when our paintings were done, she said we had to destroy our own paintings in order to get a grade. And so we did. And I have never forgotten that lesson. This is what can make artists get really timid. We torture ourselves trying to find the right color, the right placement of things. Because there is no right color and there is no one way to do something. Because painting is more than about creating something and then sitting back and waiting for others to admire it or to buy it. Art is a journey and creating a piece is just as important as having something to hang on your wall at the end. We become victims of what I call precious painting syndrome. We become so afraid of our own work that we'll mess it up, that we'll not get it right, or heavens forbid, others won't like it. We need to get over it. We need to go with our gut be fearless, rip up your painting at the end, or in my case, burn it. I love to teach, and if it could be one lesson that I could give my students, it would be to be fearless and to enjoy the journey of your creation. So getting back to this painting, it gets more refined. I keep bringing in thicker pastel sticks, refining the color, bringing up the highlights. So those real colors now are sitting on top of all those intuitive reds and blues at the beginning stages. So even if your painting turns out pretty good, and in the end I think this kind of looks like my son, the value here is in doing it, learning from it. There's no precious painting syndrome here. Don't be afraid of your artwork. For more tips, tricks, and destruction, be sure to follow the journey at swanportraits.com. More videos are coming soon.